Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salam ala rasulillah. We will continue, inshallah, today, um, section 5.1. We had a short introduction in the previous class about this section. I believe that we have uh, achieved uh, the first two objectives. So you can ask yourself, do you know what we mean by trigonometric ratios? What they are? How to find them? And uh, can you find these ratios for uh, the spatial triangles? the triangle with the 45 degrees and the triangle with 30 and 60 degrees. Today, we will uh, see some applications of the trigonometry of right triangles and how to solve uh, such world problems. Remember that uh, when you have a right triangle, the, the, the side that is corresponding to the angle, we call it opposite. The one next to it, we call it adjacent. And the one that is corresponding to the right angle, we call it hypotenuse. And these are the six ratios that we have. In fact, mainly you need to just focus on the first two ratios, sine and cosine. Tangent will be just sine over cosine. Cotangent will be the reciprocal of tangent. Secant will be the reciprocal of cosine. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. We solved these examples in the previous class. I think this was the last slide that we have stopped at. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to uh, remember the values of uh, these six trigonometric uh, ratios at these well-known angles, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90 degrees. These two triangles, this is what they meant by spatial triangles. So these uh, uh, will help you to uh, to memorize the the, the the ratios of these three angles. For zero and ninety, we will uh, uh, repeat that inshallah next class and uh, next section or in six point two to understand why it is and how to recall it. I think you are aware, Shabab, about this rule that the rule that you can use for uh, using your hand, of course, to use that. Of course, just uh, choose any uh, hand that you have, the right or the left, and decide uh, that uh, what do you have on the left, uh, the right is cosine to the left is sine. So for example, here, if you choose this to be 60, you can reverse the order zero to 90 or zero uh, from here, zero to 90 from the left to the right. Now, what is here, you will take the square root and then divide by two. So for cosine 60, how many fingers here you have? One over two. For, for sine, how many fingers left? Three over two. You can do the same for, for the others. Um, let's see, uh, can we uh, find the value of this expression? Just all what you need is just to use this table. Okay, who can tell me what to do? What is sine by over three? Sine pi over three again, pi over three and pi over six. Just you need to remember that sine pi over six, which is sine thirty degrees, is what half. is a half. Just recall this one, and you remember the others by default. Okay. So sine pi uh, over three, it is cosine pi over six. So it is what square root of three over okay. two. What is cosine pi over four? Next one, please. Cosine by over four. This is the easier one to be memorized, yes, sir. Pi over four, which is 45 degrees. It is the only angle in the quadrant, in, in the first quadrant that they are the same. Both of them are the same. Cosine and cosine, the sine and the cosine are the same sine pi over four, it is the same as cosine pi over four. Both of them are square root of two over two. So we have here square root of two over two minus what is sine pi over four? I just have mentioned it. It is two square root of two over two. Cosine pi over three it is a half. The, uh, since the sine is square root of three, the cosine will be a half and all squares. What is remaining now? It is just a matter of simplifying. And you need to be smart when you do that. What do you think? What is the best way to do this? Yes, I believe that you are right. So we will take here what as a common factor? Square root of 2 over 4. And what we will have? Square root of 3 minus 1 left, right? 
All of them are what? Square, don't forget that. Now what you will get? Two over what? 16. Square root of three minus one, which is what? Square. Which is what? One over eight. Three minus two square root of three plus one. What is that? This is four, one over eight. Four minus two square root of three. Take two as a common factor. Then simplify it with eight, it will be one over four. Two minus square root of three. I think this is the, the simplest form you, you could have for, for such exception. We will see later in chapter seven that we can use uh, the sum of uh, and the difference of two angles. In fact, this later, we will see that later that this is just just uh, sine pi over three minus pi over four. And indeed to do that, you need to write it in this way. All squared, of course. Yes. No, we will, but we will see how to find them, yes. Now we uh, in this section we are dealing with acute angles only angles <coughs> between zero and ninety degrees but we will of course have after that other other angles like 120 330 and and more just you need to find the coterminal and the reference angle this will be in 5.3 and 5 and 6.2 now uh, one of the most important applications of the trigonometric ratios is solving a triangle. What do we mean by solve a triangle? To solve a triangle, you need to find the length of the three sides and the measures of the three angles. To do that, you need two of them. If you have uh, an angle and a side or two sides or two angles, you can find the, 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 the remaining. Look here. We have here the hypotenuse, which is 12. We have the angle, which is 30. What we need to do the other angles. Of course, by default, this will be the another angle. You know that? It is 60. Why? Because the sum of the, uh, the sum of uh, the angles of triangle is what? 180. Do you know why? How to show it? Why it is 180? Uh, if, if we are in the, if we are talking about the, the plane, the XY plane, of course. But of course, if you are, if your uh, triangle is on a sphere or on a, a cylinder, this is something different. Um, so in fact, take any triangle and uh, let's say this is um, A, B, C. These are the three angles that we have. We need to show that A plus B plus C equals to what? 180 degrees, by equals to by. How to do that? To do that, you need just to draw uh, a line like this here. And you know this is, this is what? Straight angle, right? So what is the sum of this angle? 180. What about this one also? 180. So here, and you know that if you have two parallel lines, then if you have a, a secant for these two lines, then these two alternative angles have the same measure. So what is this? B. This is B. And this is what? C. A plus B plus C equals to 180 degrees. B and C are the same? B and C are not the same, not necessarily the same. No, just uh, it looks like uh, they are the same here because I draw them with the same sides in the same measures. But they, it is not necessarily to be like that. Whatever they are, of course, they could be like this, different ones. This could be smaller, larger, whatever. Okay. Now, uh, what we need to find, yes, about here. So the question here, for example, let's make the question find what? Find A. I remember a joke about this. One student. He has a question like this, and the question was find A. What was his answer? He said, here it is. 
So he understands he's finding in a, in a different way. Okay, so we need to find A. How to find A here? You need to use the sine of the angle 30. So here we will use just sine 30 degrees equals to what? No, to use the definition. It is uh, the opposite, the opposite over the adjacent, uh, the hypotenuse. So it is A over. Now ask yourself what is sine 30. Sine 30 is what? A half. So what is A? A6. Okay. Similarly, we can use what to find B? Cosine. B over 12 will be cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2. And of course, uh, B will be 12 cosine 30, and it will be 6 square root of 3. In general, if you have a theta, angle theta, and you have the, the, the opposite is A, the hypotenuse is R, the adjacent is B. Then what will be A, what will be B? It will be just for A, it will be R multiplied by sine. B will be R multiplied by cosine. Okay, why? Because this is just A over R, this is B over R, if you divide both sides by R. Excellent. I think you can solve now this recitation exercise. Please, in your notebook, try to solve this exercise. Find the exact value of each labeled part with a variable in the following figure. So here you need to find X, Y, W, and Z. All what you need to do is to use the definition of the trigonometric ratios. Any news? So what is why? Nine over two. Nine? Nine over two. It's okay. So why is nine over two? Who couldn't find the why actually? I think why is the easier one. And also X. So for for we have here, we have here two. Uh, right triangles. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is so important, Yashabab. You cannot work on a triangle unless it is right. So far, of course, we, because we, we, we are able to, uh, def we define these ratios on a right triangle. The, this, the concept will be generalized later for any triangle, not necessarily the right triangle. But uh, so far we have now a right triangle for the one on the left, we have an angle and we have a side. So we can find everything for this, for this triangle. So why, 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 why is nine over two? What is why for, for this angle? Why is what? Opposite. The opposite. So now when you have y over the adjacent uh, or the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse, it is known. So this will give us what? The opposite over the hypotenuse, it is sine. 30, right? Yes. Sine 30 is a half. So now multiply both sides by nine. This will give you y. Okay, now find x. What is it? Square root of three over two. Over two? Nine. No. 
square root of three over two. Yeah. Be careful. What is x for this angle? X is the, the adjacent here. Yeah. So now we, we will use x over nine we will be what? Cosine. Cosine 30. What is cosine 30? Square root of three over two. So this is x over nine. So multiply both sides by nine, you will get x. Okay, we obtained x and y. Now we need to find w and z. Z, oh, is w nine over four. Three square root three. Again, w or z? No, w is. W is? Uh, three square, square root. Second root. Three square root. Of three. Of three, yes. just like that. I what about z? Z nine over four. Nine over four. four. Z is nine over four is not a right answer. Three square root of three. W is three square root of three. It is a correct answer. Why? Now you have why, Shabab. What is this? Nine over two. Now this, we will work on this triangle. Unfortunately, we have only one angle here. So we need a side. We have this side from before. What is this? This is nine over two. So what we will use to find, for example, uh, let's start with Z. To find Z, what you, what you will use? What is Z for this angle? It is the, the adjacent. Yeah. So it will be Z, Z over, W, it is unknown. Both of them are unknown. So we cannot work with this. So what we will do, we will use the opposite over the adjacent. So what is that? Tan. So now uh, tangent 60 degrees is nine over two over Z, right? Now, what is 10, uh, 60 degrees? You need to remember the table. And if you forget, you can remember that it is sine 60 over cosine 60. We will see that later. It is square root of three over two divided by a half. It is square root of three. So it is square root of three. Equals to nine over two Z, right? Now multiply, it will be two square root of three Z equals to nine. You will divide by what? It will be two square root of three. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Now you need to rationalize. It will be nine multiplied by square root of three over what? Two. Over six. Three three Which is what? Three Divide, uh, take uh, three as a common factor. It will be three square root of three over two. And here's this. Yes. Uh, you can find the. Uh... W from sine 60, then you can find Z from sine. Yes, you can find W first and then and then Z. It's okay. The order here is not important. You can find W, yes. And this is what we will do to find W. What we can use to find W? Sine, uh, sine, uh, sine, 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 sine 60, which is easier, of course. Sine 60, uh, it is what? 9 over 2 over W. Sine 60 is square through over two, and this will be nine over two W, which means that uh, square root of three, when you multiply by two W, you will get square root of three W, right? Equals to nine, which means that W is what? Nine over square root of three, rationalize, which is three square root of three. Uh, yes. Uh, if we use uh, 30, 60 laws, uh, the, the W will be 9 over uh, square root of 2. Yes, you can do that because you know the properties of the 30, 60 triangle. But we, we want here, we want here to use the trigonometric regime. We need to use sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent. This yes, is 9 over 2 is not equal to 3 uh, square root uh, tangent. It is not, but the ratio between them is, will be the same. So it's our, if both uh, methods uh, are correct, they are correct both. How can uh, we get uh, different? Uh, no, no, it is the same. Just you need to redo what you did. 
Remember that when you have wherever you have a, tri a triangle with 60 degrees here, and this will be 30, the corresponding here will be two. This will be squared three, this will be one. So any other values will be just multiples of this. Okay. Let's have some fun, Shabab, uh, after solving the previous exercise. Yeah. Yes. Let's play the game of find the 10 differences. You remember that? Okay. What are, can you find 10 differences between two, these two uh, pictures? Yeah, just count them in your mind, okay? Are you uh, there or not? I want you, in fact, to focus on the main difference between these two photos. Think about it. What, what do you have here? What do we have? Uh, if you look here, in fact, we are uh, uh, here about to start uh, one of the most important applications for uh, the geometry of riot triangles for the trigonometric issues as well. In fact, here, um, let, let's start with this photo here. So we have a lady here that is, uh, she is looking upwards to a man here. And look here, we, we have here the eyes of the observer. We will call it the, the observer. Now, when, when the line of, uh, when, when the, the, the object be, being observed is above the, the, the level of the, the horizon, so we will call the horizontal line, the x-axis, if you want to think about it in the x-y plane. So the, the, the line corresponding to the eyes of the observer will represent the, 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 the horizon. When the, when the object being observed is above this line, above the horizontal line, we have an angle that is called the angle of elevation. But before that, let's define this. What do we mean by the line of sight? The line of sight is the line from the observer eyes to the object being observed. If an observer is looking at an object, then the line from the eye of the observer to the object is called the line of sight. So if the line of sight is above the horizontal line, we have what is called the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation, when you have a horizontal line and you have an angle like this, any angle of this type, it is called angle of elevation, zawiya tirtifa. So let's, let's repeat that. I'd like to uh, uh, introduce it formally. If the object being observed is above the horizontal, above the horizon, above the level of the eyes, then the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal is called angle of elevation. In other words, when the line of sight is above the x-axis, it is angle of elevation. <laughs> if the line of sight is below the x-axis, below the horizontal line, then we have what is called angle of depression, zawiyat and khifa. So if the object is below the, is below the horizontal line, then the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal line is called angle of depression. Again, how it looks like the angle of depression, we have a horizontal line and it will be like this. This is the angle, like this also is okay. This is angle also. What is the most important part here, Shabab, in this definition? Because I know that many of you, they have a problem with identifying the angles of elevation and depression. You should have what? First of all, to have angle of depression and angle of elevation, you should have what? horizontal line, which is what? Which is the horizon, the, the level of the eyes of the observer. Then if you have the line of sight above, we have angle of what? Of elevation. If you have it below this way or this way, it is depression. Let's, let's make sure about that here. 
Now here we have 10 angles. I want you, Shabab, to tell me which one of them is elevation, which one of them is depression, which, which one of them is none. Okay? Let's start with you, please, Hussam. Theta one, angle of depression or elevation or none? Angle of depression. It is angle of depression. Do you agree with him? Yes. Check, we have horizontal line, the line of sight, this is the line of sight, this is the horizon. It is below, so it is angle of depression. You are right, thank you. Next, please. You, theta two. Uh, angle of, check, do you have a horizontal line? Is the line of sight is above? So it is angle of elevation. Thank you. Next, please. What about theta three? This one. It is none, why? No problem. What? Why you you thought that it is not? Uh, it is none. I think it's the up There is a reason. You are right, by the way. It is none. It is none. Why? Who can uh, justify that, please? There is no horizontal line. So one of the sides, one of the sides, two sides. The two sides, none of them is a horizontal. So there is no level of the eyes of the observer here. So we will say that if it is if it is depression, where is the line of sight? Where is the horizontal line? So there is no horizontal line here. So this is none. What about theta four, please? Uh, theta four is none. Yes. Sure. Why? Uh, no there is no horizontal line. One of the sides must be horizontal. Yes. Uh, where it is? So is this horizontal or this? You have a problem with the, the horizontal and the vertical, yeah, Muhammad. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the, the one below. Uh... So this is another angle here. Another angle. So this is another angle, yes. Now, I remember that when you asked me about the asymptote, do you remember that? Uh, so th theta four is, uh, is none, yes. Like what? Like this? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so I can say I have some elevation. So this is angle of elevation, but of course here, the observer, he is looking what? He's looking upward. So where is the object being observed here? Okay. But if, of course, both sides here, it's satisfied. It is, you can consider it as angle of elevation. Theta five, uh, it is your turn, please. At the, the one at the end. Why? No horizontal line. Okay. Please, the one at the end. Fatani. Yes, theta six. Uh, yeah. Angle of elevation, are you sure? Do we have a horizontal line? No, the angle of sight, the line of sight is above. So this is angle of what? Angle. Of elevation, you are right, thank you. Theta seven, mean theta seven, please. The last one there, theta seven. Angle of depression, why? We have a horizontal and the line, the another side, the another side is below. So this is angle of depression. You are right. Excellent. Please, next one, the one before him. Uh, theta eight. None. It is none. Theta nine. Uh, no. None. Clear? Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure, inshallah, you have no problem with, with the other, uh, with the, uh, the problems that we will have now. Now let's start some examples. You know now how to know if it is an uh, angle of depression or angle of elevation. We have here a, a guy to try now to, to figure out this, this problem, to translate it to a geometrical shape, to a figure, then uh, to a, an equation, to a mathematical model. We have here a giant red uh, wood tree. We have a tree, okay, that uh, cast a shadow 532 feet long. So for us, if we want to, to, to sketch the, the, the figure, what we will draw the tree. No need to draw the tree with, with, with leaves and with uh, all the details. For us, the tree is a vertical line like this, okay? And it will not be, of course, it will be on the ground. So we will have here what? Right triangle, okay? So we have a tree, uh, now, when we have a shadow, we have a sun. Let's let's assume that the sun is here. Okay, the shadow of the tree will be here, 
right? So what is the length, the length of the shadow? 532, okay, feet. Find the height of the tree. So let's call it H. We need to find H. If the angle of elevation to the sun is 25.7 degrees. So where is the angle of, the, of elevation? Where, where we will sketch? Above the, the angle of elevation, imagine that you are looking at the sun. So of course, it is angle of depression. It will be something like this or like this. So it is angle of elevation. So if, if it is here, let's say that we are here. We are here. And the angle of elevation to the sun will be the same. Do you know that? If it is, if you draw it here or here or here, the angle of, of, of elevation will be the same. This, this angle is the same as this. So let's, this is 25.7. So this is what we have. Now we have a right triangle. We have uh, two sides, we have angle. So now to find H, what you need to do? Use tangent of 25.7 degrees, which will be H over what? 532. Now you need a calculator, of course. When we give you questions, we'll give you a well-known angle, not, not this angle. Uh, of course, now you can solve this one by using a calculator and to find what is, what is H. Just find it and evaluate. Okay, yes. Does the unit here uh, is... Yes, if it is different, but here we have only one unit mentioned here. So it is one unit. Yes. Are we allowed to use calculator as a measure? No. We will give you angles that you can find them without a calculator. What about my point of one? The same, but you, you need you need these, yes, in, in other courses. And the idea here, it is not about the angle. The angle is about, it is about the concept. This is the concept. After that, it is a matter of calculation. Okay. Now here you have uh, some guidelines for you, how to solve word problems, how to solve applied trigonometry problem. You need to draw a figure for the problem, label uh, your variable, call this H, X, Y, whatever. Just try to make a well-known, of course, a variable. Use the, the sketch to write the equation relating. Try to relate them. This is the, the mathematical model of the problem. Now you translate this, this from English to math when you write this equation. Then of course, solve the resulting equation and check your answer if it makes sense or not. Let's try to solve this example. Again, you need to read it, reread it until you understand it. You cannot solve it if you didn't understand it. And of course, when you read it, try to have a pen to, to, because it will help you to, to figure it out. So what you will do from a point on the ground, so you will draw the ground, this is the ground. For the ground, it is for us a, hor a, vertic a horizontal line like this. From a point on the ground, so let's say that this is the point on the ground, 500 feet from the base of a building. What is that? So we have a building. And the building is on the ground for sure. For our, for, for us, the building, it is not necessarily to, to uh, draw a, a building with windows and doors and it is for us a vertical line. This is a building, okay? Uh-huh. So what is this 500? The distance between the-, the From a point on the ground, 500 from- The base. From the base, this is the base. So for this is the base. So the, the distance from here to here, is it the height or the, the distance between the point and the building? Again, read it, stop here, don't continue. From a point on the ground, 500 feet from the base. So the point is 500 from the, the base. So this is the base and this is the point. So the distance between them is 500. How do you know the point is on the ground? He said that from a point on the ground, from a point on the ground. Again, this is why I said you need to understand the problem. Read it and read it again and again until you understand it. Because most of the mistakes, they're coming from uh, uh, wrongly understanding the, 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 the problem. So we stopped here. Uh, uh, so far now, I think so far, so good, so good, so good, so far. An, ob an observer finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building. 
an observer. An observer, where is the observer? It is at the point. From a point, an observer find. So you can just forget about this. These are additional informations. From a point on the ground, an observer finds that. So the observer is here. Finds that the angle of elevation. So we will draw angle of elevation. You know angle of elevation is to be like this. So we'll draw angle of elevation to where? To the top of the building is what? 24 degrees. And the angle of elevation, again, the angle of elevation to the top of a flagpole atop the building is 27 degrees. So we have here at the top of the building, we have a flagpole here. Again, for us, the flag is just a vertical line. So now uh, the angle of elevation is it where it is the, to the top of the flag to here. So it will be again from the same uh, point. It's like this. Now, where is this angle? Is it this one? No, this is not an angle of elevation at all. In fact, here it is. This is the angle of elevation. Always the angle of elevation will be like this. There, there must be a horizontal line. Excellent. So this is 27. Find the height of the building and the length of the flag pole. Okay. So we need to find, uh, let's call this X. Let's call this Y. Okay. We need to find X and Y. Of course, the model here is uh, written in a little bit different way, but just using the notation, using other notation. Again, these va variables, they are like your son. Give him any name you want. X, Y, Z, W, H, K, whatever. So what he did here, he assumed that the, the building height is H and the, the height of the building and the flagpole is what? K. So here, if the, what will be the, now the length of the flagpole? The flagpole will be K minus H. I think my, my idea is also not bad. Just you need here to add that this is what? X plus y. This is X plus, this is X plus Y. You can use this approach or that approach. It is the same idea. Now the, the main idea is how to, how to uh, deal with this problem. Now you have it like triangle now. What to do? So let, let's continue with this, with, 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 with this option. What to do? We will use tangent. So tangent what? 24. Tangent of 24 will be what? H. Will be H. H. This is H. 500. H over 500. You're right. Now from here, we can find what? H. How to find K? Using 27. So this is H. This is K. Then the length of the, this will be the height of what? Of the building, H. And K minus H will be the height of what? Or the length of the flag. Yes. Excellent. Now, what I want you to do is to try, do we have time? No, we don't. So I will go to the next question. I will go to the question that is similar to what we did right now. Please try to solve this. This is very similar to the question that we just solved. In your notebook, please try to solve it. I'll take the attendance. Sketch the figure. Sketch the figure of the problem. Halina, show the figure. If the figure is okay. From a point on the ground, 100 feet from the base of the building, that angle of elevation is 60 and that. Excellent, you are right. Your, your figure is right. It's correct, you are correct, you are right. Continue. Correct. It's correct. The figure is correct. Now what you need to do is to continue solving. Yes. The figure, correct. Now you need to label, what do you, what do you want to find? 
the length of a flagpole. So uh, but call, it, yeah, yeah, uh, call it, call it, call it x, y. Use use variables because you need to find an equation and then solve this equation. So for those who didn't uh, sketch the figure, I'll uh, help you to do that. So what do we have here? We have a from a point on the ground, this is the point on the ground, 500 uh, or 100 feet from the base of a building. This is the building. An observer finds that the angle of elevation to the top is 60. So this is 60. Degrees and that the angle of elevation to the top of flag ball, we have flag ball here, is alpha. This is alpha. And he told us that sine alpha is what? He didn't give us alpha, he gave us the sine of alpha. Then what is the length of the flag ball? So we need to find what is x. Let's call it x. This is what we want. Of course, we will call this y from here to here because we need to use this triangle. Now, from this, uh, what, what is this? 100, right? The distance between them. So we can find y easily, right? Yeah, so why it is not difficult. What we will do to find y? We will use 1060. 1060 equals to y over 100. 1060 is what? It is square root three, right? Okay. So it is y over 100. So y is what? 100 square root of three. So we, 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 we are able to find y. Now we need to find x. To find x, in fact, the problem that this triangle, yeah, Shabab, this triangle is not what? It's not right triangle. So it is not right to work with it. So what do we need to do? We need to work with the bigger one with the one with alpha lock here. Now, in fact, we have what? We have x plus y over 100 equals to what? Sine or tan equals to tan gent of alpha. Is that right? This, this x plus y, the opposite over the adjacent equals to the tangent of alpha. And the question is, what is tan alpha? We have sine alpha. We need to find tangent alpha. How to do that? We will draw, we will draw another triangle. Of course, it will be bigger or smaller, the one that we have. With this information, so what we will have here, four is what? Is the opposite and square root of 19 is what? The adjacent, we need to find what is this? What is this? It will be what? It will be... It will be square root, of, square root of 19, it will be 19 square root of 19 minus 16, which is square root of what? Of three. So let's go, let's continue now. So we, we have we have y, so we have x plus, what is y? y is 100 square root of what? Of three over 100 equals to 10, 10 alpha. What is 10 alpha? So 10 alpha will be what? Four over square root of three. It will be four over square root of three. Okay, now we have an equation with, with one variable, which is what? X. X, we need to solve it for what? For X. So what we will do, this will be what? X plus 100 square root of three equals to 400 square root of three over three. Is that right? Yes. And this, this is equals to what? X equals to 400 square root of three over three minus 100 square root of three, which will be what? 400 minus 300, which is 100 square root of three over three, right? Yeah. And the answer is, the answer is A. Any question related to this, Shabab? Again, all what you need to do, use all what you have to find what you want. I don't like to play with the choices when I have to solve the problem. Uh, it, you can do that, but not in a, in a, in general. Yes. Uh, 